everybody. Welcome back to John's Fantasy Football Show. He's John. I'm Jared. This is really just John's show. I am just the host for today. Now we got a lot of things to cover. Week four reactions from John. Some fancy strategies, as always, we do every week. And then week five predictions. So without further ado, let's get into John's reaction of week four. So John, our topic is going to be waiver wire pickup. So after, you know, a good performance in week four, you know, who are some players that you're looking out for to maybe pop off in week five, six, seven um, in, in those upcoming weeks? Yeah. So I wanted to talk about some of the players that you might have probably picked up on the waiver wire or in free agency this past week. You know, the last couple of weeks I've been talking about people, you know, people you should trade for, buy high on or buy low on or sell high on. But I wanted to talk about some waiver wire pickups. So the first is Damian Williams. If you wavered for him this week, good job because Montgomery is out for the next four to five weeks. I don't think he's going to come back until after their week nine buy. So probably week 10. So Damian Williams is a solid RB2 for the next four or five games. So if you have Damian Williams on your team, It depends what your running back situation is. I picked him up in one of my 12 team leagues and I need to start him. I can't trade him. I can't bench him because Chris Carson didn't play this week. So I had to put him in instead of Chris Carson. So it depends on your league. But honestly, if you have some other decent running backs and you could just picked up Damian Williams, you might want to try to trade him. And somebody you could, I would be fine with you trading, you know, a Damian Williams and some bench wide receiver for David Montgomery, because look in fantasy football, you want to try to win now, but if your record is three and one, or if you're a solid two and two, then you could, uh, you could definitely trade Damian Williams and one of your receivers for David Montgomery, knowing that the player you're trading Damian Williams to, he's going to have a good couple of weeks in the next four to five games. But after that, after their buy in week 10, you're going to have Montgomery down the stretch and into the fantasy playoffs. So you always want to think about the future in fantasy. And obviously Damian Williams has a good matchup this week against the Raiders. So maybe waiting for him to have a good game this week, and then maybe trying to trade him, shop around, see what you can get, knowing that he's only going to be there for, you know, four or five games, then that, that could be pretty good. Another one is LaVisca Chenault. You probably picked him up. If you didn't, you should probably pick him up because DJ Chark is out for the season now. We saw last Thursday that he got hurt. And now Chenault, who his ad- average depth of target was around 4.6 yards, which means he was being targeted right around the line of scrimmage, which is not great for fantasy. It increased to like, I think, 16 yards, which was we saw him get a deep shot and that he actually caught. It was like a 40 or 50 yard pass that he caught. So LaVisca Chenault is going to be more involved in the offense and take over that deep shot role as well as getting some screen passes. So definitely keep him. He's a solid flex play this week against the Titans. Another one we've been talking about in our podcast, the Bengals backfield. We also obviously love Chris Evans, had him on the podcast. Jared's wearing his jersey right now. So if you don't have Chris Evans on your team, he could be a good bench stash because him and Samaj P. Ryan should probably split carries if Mixon is out this week. Remember, Mixon was out last year, and the coach said he was day-to-day, and Mixon never returned for the whole season. Now, obviously, I don't think that's going to happen this season, but it's possible. Mixon was limited in practice. He probably won't play this week. Hopefully he'll he'll come back for the Bengals' sake, but we'll see about Samaj P. Ryan and Chris Evans this week against the Packers. I think Evans could at least have five catches in the passing game because the Packers put up points, so the Bengals are going to need to throw it. So keep an eye on both of them. If you have them, I would probably stash them on your bench. Unless it's a four-team team league, I'm probably not starting either of them. And then if you picked up Sam Darnold this week in fantasy, obviously the two rushing touchdowns pairing him with DJ Moore – is great. I know, Jared, you you did that in one of your leagues, right? Oh, yeah. I picked up uh, Sam Darnold actually in the draft, believe it or not. Oh, wow. So I was pleasantly surprised with his rushing ability, leads the league in rushing touchdowns. Yeah, so obviously that's probably not going to continue, especially with McCaffrey playing, um, coming back possibly this week. But if you have Darnold, I mean, it depends on your quarterback situation. If you picked up Darnold and you have somebody like Mahomes, you might want to see what you can get for Darnold, you know, try to trade him. 
but if you have somebody like Jalen Hurts and now you have Darnold, that'd be good to keep both of them because they both have rushing ability. They both have a high floor each week because of that. And you could decide who you're going to start depending on the matchup. And then the last guy that probably wasn't picked up in your league. And if he wasn't, you need to pick him up right now. It's Trey Lance. I was high on him coming into the season. And now Garoppolo's injured. He's probably not going to play this week. So if nobody has Trey Lance in your league, you need to pick him up because he has rushing ability and he could have a good week this week against the Cardinals. I know the Cardinals are the only undefeated team in the league, but Trey Lance could have a really good week. And if you have, if your quarterback situation is kind of iffy, if you have a Darnold or Hertz, obviously they're better starters than Lance, but Lance could end up being the starter within a few weeks. I know they're saying that they'd ra much rather Garoppolo, but if nobody has Lance, you should definitely pick him up because of the rushing ability that he has and because of the coach he has behind him, one of the best offensive minds in the game right now. Hmm. And what's the situation with, Trey Lance and Garoppolo. So basically Garoppolo got hurt in the last game. Trey Lance came in. He did throw that 76 or 79 yard touchdown to Debo Samuel, which was good. But the thing is Garoppolo is practicing on a limited basis this week. They don't expect him to play against the Cardinals, but they're saying that he's the starter when he comes back, when he's healthy. So, which obviously isn't good for Trey Lance, but what if he has a really good game here against the Cardinals and then they have a bye next week okay maybe it's the time for the 49ers to sit back and okay let's reevaluate what if what if Trey Lance comes in and beats the Cardinals and has a really good game okay maybe we start to explore him or do we stick with Garoppolo now they're saying that they nobody what they were saying was that nobody was prepared for Trey Lance to come in as the starter once Garoppolo got hurt which is kind of foolish to me because Garoppolo is always injury prone. So didn't you know this was going to happen? Like Jonathan and I said it like before the season started, we were saying, you know, Garoppolo week four, week five, he's going to get hurt. You know, he always does. So like to ha not have a plan in place is kind of dumb, but hopefully this week they, they play Lance and they script some play, some good plays for him. But it seems like week six after their bye, it's going to be Garoppolo starting, but you know, Trey Lance is a good bench stash with that rushing ability. Yeah, that statement with um, the coaches saying, like, you know, Garoppolo has a job when he comes back. It's like we've heard that a lot before yeah. with teams. Yeah. So I mean, we, we just heard it with Andy Dalton. Remember, I think I was talking about it last week. I was like, Allen Robinson's a great buy low opportunity. Now, I don't think that anymore because the coaches were saying Andy Dalton is our starter when he's healthy. And then all of a sudden they come out the next day and they're like, Justin Fields is the starting quarterback moving forward, no matter what Andy Dalton's status is. So it's like, oh my gosh, they're just playing with us at this point. Exactly. I think it's just, it's something that you can say that pleases the fans, pleases <laughs> the players. It's like, yeah. and, and you can push off a decision until later after, you know, Lance has played. Right. So it's not, exactly. not as risky of a decision. Right. Um. So we're talking about Trey Lance, you know, backup quarterback, quarterback. Let's go into some fantasy strategies. Now we're going to focus on backup running backs and backup quarterbacks. Something you may not be thinking about, you know, they're third string running backs, maybe second string backups or, or sorry, first string uh, quarterbacks, but you know, maybe on bad teams. Um, you know, the, the list for backup running backs, we're going to talk about uh, Madison, Mitchell, Sermon, Hubbard, Dylan, Michelle. There's a lot of great players that have the potential to pop off. They have very high ceilings. Maybe just haven't had the opportunity. I know we're going to talk, you're going to talk about it, but with Hubbard, you know, the Panthers put DJ Moore in the backfield. Oh my that, gosh. That could have been a perfect play for Hubbard, but for some reason, Panthers just don't trust him yet. Right. So what are your thoughts on, on all these backups? And then uh, eventually you'll get to the uh, trade for your backup quarterback uh, for your fantasy league. But start with the, the running back so far. Yeah, so the running backs, what I wanted to emphasize in this fantasy strategy segment with the running backs is that you need to pick up these backup running backs on high profile teams that have good running games and stash them on your bench. Now, you might not be using them because you probably have other good starters. And if you're in a six, eight team league, maybe even 10 team league, you're probably not going to start them that much. If you're in a 12 team league, you're going to want to stash these guys on your bench. And I'll talk about one of my 12 team leagues 
that I'm in first place and I'm three and one, and that's good for first place in the league. But one of my league, that's the league that I have Chris Carson. He didn't play this week. I did get Damian Williams on my team. I picked him up off waivers and I have him starting, but on my bench, I have Alexander Madison, who right now I have in my RB2 spot. And I also have Elijah Mitchell and Trey Sermon. And then a lot of people, you know, picked up Hubbard. And it's unfortunate that CMC seems like he's going to return this week. So you didn't really get any value out of Hubbard. But what I'm what I what I want to emphasize is you have to have these guys on your team. Look, Dalvin Cook is dealing with an ankle injury that he might not play with this week. And if he doesn't play, that's a perfect example for or a perfect opportunity for Madison to have a good game against the Detroit Lions, a bad running defense. And then Elijah Mitchell could get the starting role for the 49ers once he returns. Or if Sermon plays this week and, and Mitchell doesn't, that's, be, that's another perfect opportunity to, for Sermon to have a great game. I have both of those guys on my 12-team league bench. So automatically, I'm, pro- I'm going to have the starter for the 49ers. And we know the starter for the 49ers usually has a really good game and really good in fantasy. Like last year, we saw Mostert, Jeff Wilson come in. We saw all these guys come in and, and have success with the 49ers run game. Also, A.J. Dillon. You know, Aaron Jones is dealing with an injury this week, and he's most likely going to play against the Bengals. But what if he hurts that ankle a little bit more than AJ Dillon the next week he's on the Packers that's a great offensive team he's guaranteed at least 15 to 20 fantasy points so you want to pick these guys up Sony Michelle had a touchdown on Thursday against the Seahawks and Daryl Henderson was dealing with an injury so they didn't want to play him a lot but what about what if Henderson you know hurts that injury a little bit and then Michelle has to start he's going to get 20 plus carries so this is the time in the season where you want those backup running backs and because there's going to be bye weeks and it might align perfectly where the guy is out, the starter is out and you could put them into your RB two spot. So I always like to draft wide receiver heavy because it's a PPR league. So you want receivers. So in that 12 team league, I have Tyree kill Deandre Hopkins at my wide receivers. And then I have Jamar chase at my flex. So like my wide receivers are set. My running backs aren't on the other hand, but I have Damian Williams this week, who I'm pretty confident in. And then right now I have Alexander Madison in my lineup because I don't know if cook's going to play. And even if he does against the lions, they might take him out early because they might be winning by a lot. And Madison might have a good game. So just pick up those backup running backs. Obviously, if you have Hubbard, he, he really doesn't even have value anymore. Hopefully you tried to trade him when you picked him up, but also Damian Williams, maybe try to shop around for him after this week. And then the second strategy, like Jared, you mentioned trading your backup quarterback. I wanted to talk about the quarterbacks. I mentioned Trey Lance, but one of my leagues, I'm in another 12 team league and I have Mahomes as my quarterback. Now, if you have Mahomes as your quarterback, you might have another quarterback on your bench. Now in that league, I had Russell Wilson on my bench. I drafted him in the draft because I drafted him in one of the later rounds. I want to say seventh or eighth round. I picked up Russ because Nobody else in the league was picking him and he was too good value at that time. Maybe I could have got a Brandon Cooks instead of Russ at the, that position. But in that league, I have Devonte Adams, Cooper Cup and Adam Thielen. So I didn't really need uh, like a Brandon Cooks at that point. So I picked Russell Wilson, knowing that some da- some sometime down the road, you know, week four, week five around this point, there's going to be a team that needs a quarterback. And sure enough, there's a team that drafted, they were the last team to draft a quarterback and they drafted Carson Wentz. Now, obviously Wentz is not performing how he should. So the guy offered me this week, CD lamb for Russell Wilson. And I accept that I accepted that trade. Now, CD lamb, I posted on TikTok. I was like, he's a guy you need to trade for and buy low on right now before he pops off. He had 24 targets in week one and week two combined. And the last couple of weeks, he has, he had like nine fantasy points two weeks ago. And then last week he only had, three pet fantasy points. So it's a perfect opportunity. I'd say trade your backup quarterbacks, especially if you have somebody like Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, you know, Josh Allen, Kyler Murray, trade your backup quarterback. If you have a Sam Darnold or Jalen Hurts or something like that, trade them away and try to get like a good flex guy because you might be saying like, oh yeah, well, what if Mahomes and Allen or Murray like have a buy? You could stream a guy that week. You could pick up a guy like a Daniel Jones that has a good matchup or a Kirk Cousins that has a good matchup. So I wouldn't worry too much about the bye week. You want more about solidifying your flex or your RB2. So if you could trade someone like Darnold for Brandon Cooks, 
or someone like Hertz for, you know, a Damian Williams or even a David Montgomery, I'd be fine with that. You know, trying to solidify your RB2, your flex spot, or even trying to get a, a solid tight end. So those are the fantasy strategies I have. I mean, Jared, any, any input on those, anything you think I should touch on or I missed? Yeah, I think for the quarterback position, I've only been playing fantasy football for about three or four years, but I do know that for you, I mean, we only had a six, six team league, you know, when we play, Mm -hmm. but I always noticed that you never picked up like a star quarterback. You right. pick up like, you know, Brady, but Brady wasn't that great in fantasy. Uh, you'd had Kirk Cousins before. Um, and you would just pick up these guys in free agency or in the waiver yeah. wire, play them that week, drop them the next week, play another ma- good matchup that week, drop them again. So it's like, you know, people that drafted, like you said, Carson Wentz in the last round, you could have gotten some flex player right. in that position. So this is even a strategy for like drafting is right. maybe, maybe not don't focus too much on the quarterback position, p- focus on your flex spot, focus on your receivers and running back, you know, yeah. because there's, I mean, Daniel Jones, Sam Darnold, both those guys are top quarterbacks, even Jalen hurts top quarterbacks. And no one, I bet nobody drafted. I mean, I did, but it was, <laughs> it was just because I had bet on Sam Darnold being a pro bowler right so i think that strategy is good because you can you can focus more on the more volatile positions receiver running back quarterback there's no not a huge difference in point differential between jalen hurts and mahomes right not as bad but if you're like elijah mitchell or you know, Adam Jones or something, or or Aaron Jones, you know, that's a huge difference week to week. Exactly. So like you were saying, I think what I was doing, usually you stream defenses, but in a six team league, I think last year I got away with streaming the quarterback, which was, which was funny, but also a little frustrating because, you know, it was hard to find you, you think a guy has a great matchup and then they decide to run the ball a lot. But Mm -hmm. I think, like you said, like what I was saying before the season, and if you guys listened to like, I was giving, trying to give some draft advice before, you know, before the season started. And the most important position in fantasy is wide receiver, because if you're in a PPR league, they get the most points. If you look at how many points they get, there's the discrepancy between the top five receivers and the, and then like 15 to 20 is a lot more than the difference between the top five quarterbacks and then 15 to 20. Like you're saying, there's not that much of a difference between Mahomes and Hertz, but there's a big difference between having Cooper Cup or having, you know, like Robert Woods or, you know, no, Wood had, Woods had a good game last week, but you know what I'm saying? It's a big difference between Cooper Cup and Brandon Cooks, you know? So like you want to solidify your receivers and then I, I pick a decent like in in my 12 team league that I have those three good receivers I have Brady as my quarterback and then two of my other leagues I have Brady and then one of them I have Mahomes so like I like to solidify a decent quarterback but focusing on the receivers and then you know picking up running backs that have good matchups because you know it's a PPR league they're, they're not getting catches as much but yeah yeah let's keep it moving with the week five predictions so our first topic to start off with games that John loves. So you can list off. There's three games. So tell us the games that you love. So three games that I love that you guys, if you have fantasy players on these teams, you should probably start them. The first this is the Chiefs versus Bill. So this is the third straight week that I'm mentioning the Chiefs game as a game that I love. And it's worked out the last couple of weeks because the Chiefs defense is horrible. And the Chiefs offense is amazing. So these, this game is going to be high scoring. Now, last year when the Chiefs and Bills played, the weather wasn't great. So it was lower, lower scoring. This game is easily going to be in the high 20s, could be even high 30s for both of these teams. So if you have players on these teams, try to start them. Obviously, you're starting Mahomes, Hill, Kelsey on those teams. If you have Edwards Alaire, you're going to try to start him. Allen, Beasley, Stefan Diggs, you're probably going to try to start him. And Zach Moss, you might try to get him into your RB2 spot. 
The second game is the Packers versus Bengals. Now, the Packers secondary is kind of struggling. They lost some guys to injury. Doesn't seem like Alexander is going to play this week with an injury, so that boosts the Bengals receivers. And then the Packers, they know how to score points, and the Bengals know how to score points as well, and both their defense aren't great. So if you have Devontae Adams, Aaron Jones, Aaron Rodgers, you're starting all of them, of course. And then if you have Bengals players like Boyd or Chase or Burrow, you're going to try to get them into their into your lineup as well. And then the third game is the Giants versus Cowboys. Now, the Giants usually can't score a lot of points, but usually the Giants and Cowboys are pretty high scoring. I'd say both teams are probably going to get over 20 points. The Cowboys let up a lot of points to the Panthers last week, and they only threw to DJ Moore. So it was either Darnold or DJ Moore, and they still couldn't stop him. So I think that Giants-Cowboys game is going to be pretty high scoring. It doesn't seem like Shepard or Slayton will play. So if you have Galladay, put him in your lineups. Kadarius Tony could be a sneaky good flex play. Barkley, obviously, expect a good game from. And then Daniel Jones is a streaming option. And then Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb, Dalton Schultz is even an option. And of course, Zeke, if he plays this week, for sure. So those are the games that I love. I mean, which one of those you think those are good games? You think they're going to be high scoring? Yeah, I think all of them have potential. Um, Giants Cowboys may be low scoring just because all Giants games are low scoring. But true. Do you think uh, a guy that, man, we haven't heard of in a while, um, John Ross? Oh, yeah. He had a huge touchdown last week. Mm -hmm. Do you think they favor him over Tony? I mean, so I want to actually look that up because I think Tony had more targets than Ross. Now, Ross, they did give that deep shot to, but I don't know how many other targets they did give to John Ross. I think... I don't think John Ross would have been really that involved. Like, let's say Slayton or Shepard comes back. I think Tony will have a larger role than John Ross because John Ross and Darius Slayton are in the same role. It's the deep shot, right? Yeah. Because Slayton can do that, and so can Ross because he's fast. So, like, if if Slayton comes back, he's going to be into that role, and John Ross might not even get, like, two targets, you know, in that game. So now I'm going back to the game. So... Tony actually led the team in targets. He had nine targets while Galladay had seven. And then John Ross only had four targets. So he did have that, have that 52 yard touchdown. So without that 52 yard touchdown, he just had like two catches for 25 yards. Mm -hmm. So I think they still favor, you know, Tony. And actually it's pretty good that Tony's getting the work now that Slayton and Shepard are out, which makes this offense. I don't know. It's kind of like we got a deep offense with, we got Barkley, out of the backfield he had that big catch down the sideline last week and then we got Galladay we got Shepard who was our number one in week one Galladay's a great receiver Tony's catching passes Ross went deep Slayton can go deep like we got a lot of options so this offense is looking good we're just we just need everybody to perform and actually be healthy and we still got Engram at the tight end which he can't stay healthy but you know that's besides the point it's a very weird thing with the Giants. You have all these weapons, but they just can't seem to score. I mean, if they scored 28 points, they win all their games. Yeah. Because their their defense is legit. But um, yeah. for some reason, with Daniel Jones being inconsistent, the receivers dropping balls, it, it just and penalties. I yeah. mean, it, it just never works out with them to where they <laughs> score a lot of points, even though they have yeah. all these great weapons. Yeah. Um, you have two games that you hate, and I think one of them is pretty interesting, but talk about the two games. So the first game that I hate that if you have guys on your fantasy team in these games, you should probably try to sit them. The first one is probably pretty obvious. The Broncos and the Steelers last week, I said the Broncos and the Ravens, you know, low scoring. And that was right. If you started Sutton or if you started Tim Patrick, you're probably not happy with that. So this week, Broncos versus Steelers, if you have Sutton, if you have Tim Patrick, be careful about starting them. Melvin Gordon, Javante Williams, be careful about starting them. We don't know if Bridgewater is going to start. Seems like he might. Even if he does, the Steelers defense is pretty good. And then on the Steelers side of the ball, the Broncos defense is pretty good. And Big Ben is banged up. I wouldn't start Juju this week. I wouldn't start Claypool this week. Najee Harris is his ceiling is capped because of that offense is so bad and Denver's defense is good. So his, his ceiling is probably capped. He can't get any more than like 23, 24 points. 
And then somebody like Deontay Johnson is also going to be tough. He's going to be tough to sit because he did have 24 points last week. He was one of my weekly picks on my TikTok live, but at the same time, it's tough to start him because this Steelers team is so bad. So that's a game that I don't like. If you have guys in that game, try to find a spot on your bench for them. And the second game, which I think you were alluding to as surprising is the Browns versus chargers. Now, I'm super excited to watch this game. I think this is going to be a great game. But the reason why I think this is going to be low scoring is because last week the Browns played the Vikings and they won 14 to 7. They only let up 7 points and usually the Vikings score a lot of points when they're at home. So they, to keep them to 7 points is pretty good. And then the week before, I know it was Justin Fields playing, but they held the Bears to 6 points. So this Browns defense has been playing really well lately. And then on the other side of the ball, the Chargers defense has been playing really well. They kept the Raiders, who were pretty hot, to, to you know only a couple touchdowns, and they won that game. And then, obviously, we saw them beat the Chiefs. So I think this is a game that's going to be lower scoring. I don't think any team hits 30 points. And obviously, the Browns like to run the ball, and the Chargers have been decent against the run. And then, you know, Thielen and Jefferson didn't have huge games last week. So... I'd say be careful about Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, and Austin Eckler. Also Herbert. I would honestly start like a Hertz or a Sam Darnold over Herbert this week, and that might sound crazy, but I think they have better matchups and could do better than Herbert this week because of how the Browns defense has been playing. And also Kareem Hunt was my, one of my weekly picks last week, but I would be careful about starting him this week because – they're going to run the ball, and I think this is just going to be lower scoring. I'd be careful about starting Odell as well. I mean, what do you think of that game? Do you think it has potential to go super high scoring, or do you think it's going to be lower scoring? Uh, it'll be low scoring for the Browns. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I agree with that. I think the Chargers are going to win this game at home. I, I do know that Baker Mayfield's dealing with a shoulder injury. Yeah. That it doesn't affect his throwing, but – you know, if he gets hit, throws the wrong way, some, something to, to aggravate it, and he's not the same, then that defense is going to give at some point. Yeah. You know, with the Chargers offense, it's it's going to give. I mean, we've beaten the Chiefs. We scored, I think, 30, and then the Raiders, we scored 28. Um, so, and, we, and we've jumped, like, right off the bat in both Chiefs and Raiders games, we've jumped to a huge lead. Right. So I expect the same in this game, jump to a huge lead, maybe 14, 17, and probably be able to hold that. I think we win this game scoring even 21 points. Yeah. I would say we win. I, I would say so too. I don't think the Browns are going to get to 21 either. Yeah. Browns, Browns are a weird team. I don't know what to think of them. Obviously elite defense, but this Baker Mayfield injury, Odell coming back from injury, Chubb hasn't been playing well. Hunt's been kind of uh, uh, overperforming him. It's just weird. Like it, it, they're not like on offense. They're not doing anything crazy. Even right. though they have Odell, is Landry still out? Yeah, Landry's still out. It's like I don't know. There's just nothing like special about him. I don't know. I feel like the past couple of years has been so much hype. Yeah. And this year it's just kind of like, well, they made the playoffs. They did good. Now it's just kind of like. Browns are the Browns and, and they just got to do their job and make the playoffs. Like I haven't really been right. too impressed, but I mean, if they beat the chargers, I, I definitely will be. But I think if I had to score this, it would be like chargers, like 24 and then like Browns closer to 10, you know? Yeah. I would say, so, I would say somewhere around, like I would probably say chargers 23, maybe Browns, like, you know, 13 or 16, maybe somewhere around that 14 range. But like you said that I thought the Browns were going to come out and like take command of that division because we thought it was the Steelers, but we kind of knew going into the season that Big Ben wasn't playing as well. And now it's really anybody's division with the Bengals at three and one, the Ravens overcoming injuries, the Steelers are done for, but you know, the Browns at three and one, it's kind of anybody's division. We thought the Browns might you know, take control of it, but they really haven't. So I see your point there. Yep. Well, I talked about Baker Mayfield's injury. So let's talk about the injuries for this week. So there's a, a good list. Calvin Ridley, Joe Mixon, Christian McCaffrey, Chase Edmonds. Talk about those injuries this week. 
Yeah, so the first one, Ridley, obviously most of you probably know that already. He's not going to play in the London game tomorrow morning. He didn't travel with the team to London, so that upgrades Kyle Pitts. Hopefully, I think we were talking about this before we, we got on. You just traded for Kyle Pitts in one of your leagues, and I, I have Kyle Pitts in one of my 12-team leagues. I think this is finally the week they try to get it to him with Ridley out, Russell Gage out. That's two of their top three receivers. They have their top receivers, Olamide, um, Zacchaeus, which he's probably going to get close to eight targets. But I think this is basically going to be a Pitts and Cordero Patterson type game. So if you have Pitts or Patterson, you're starting them this week. And a lot of people have been asking me on Instagram DMs like, OK, should I trade Patterson? What what can I get for Patterson? You know, asking me who I can who they can get. And basically what I've been telling most people is hold Patterson for one more week. Now that Ridley is out, it's a perfect time to play Patterson. Get one more week out of him. He's playing the Jets. I mean, they're probably going to be leading. And Mike Davis has not been doing well. I think last week he had 13 carries for 14 yards. And no, I don't think he has any play this season that's gone over 10 yards. That's crazy. He gets pretty good volume and he hasn't ran for over 10 yards on any of any of his runs or his catches. So that's a little concerning for me. Keep Patterson for one more week. See what his usage is this week. And also, if you have pits, don't be worried. Start him this week. Hopefully they start to get him more involved. The second one is Joe Mixon. Obviously, it doesn't seem like he's going to play this week. We talked about it a few minutes ago, but that basically upgrades Boyd and Jamar Chase and possibly T Higgins. If he plays the Packers secondary is banged up and with Mixon out, the Bengals are probably going to have to throw it more. So I like Boyd. I like Chase. Keep an eye on Higgins. If he plays, you're probably going to start him in your flex or possibly wide re- wide receiver two spot, but obviously a big upgrade for Boyd and Chase. If Higgins doesn't play as well. The third one, CMC, obviously we talked about Hubbard Hubbard before. You're probably pretty angry if you have Hubbard because you didn't really get much value out of of him because DJ Moore stole all of his uh, carries and catches, and now CMC is coming back. So I would hold on to Hubbard just in case CMC comes back and gets hurt again, just like last year. But if CMC plays, you're starting him. DJ Moore, you're starting no matter what because his volume is insane. And the last injury is Chase Edmonds. A lot of people asking me about Edmonds and Connor. What do I do with them? Do I start them? Do I trade them high? Connor had two touchdowns the last two weeks. It seems like Edmonds might not play. He was did not practice Wednesday and Thursday. So we're going to see if he practices Friday. Today's Friday. So we're going to see if he practices today. If he does, you're going to start him against San Francisco. But if he doesn't, that's a huge upgrade for James Connor. So definitely start James Conner if Edmonds doesn't play, but those are the injuries for now. Yeah. Uh, James Conner surprised me. He looks like the goal line guy, you know, yeah. last year I had uh, Kyler Murray and I had Kyler Murray and Chase Edmonds, but um, it was funny. Kyler would always steal the touchdowns, at the goal line or yeah. like in the red zone. He would always take it and run in. And now it looks like they're kind of preserving his body and using James Conner to kind of, get those touchdowns so like Connor doesn't have big runs but he just gets touchdowns he's just right so touchdown dependent yeah so all right so we we know John has weekly picks but currently like he said it's Friday he does not know exactly what his weekly picks are but he does have a range of players that he will pick from or that he's looking at at the moment so John, which players are you looking at for potential weekly picks this week? So what I usually do is throughout the week, based on injuries and matchups, I have a list in the notes app in my phone, and I put some players that I you know, might choose as my weekly picks. And like you said, I really don't, to be honest, I have no idea who my three weekly picks are going to be this week. I don't even know one of them, but I'm going to give you a list. I'm going to talk about some of the players that I really like that could possibly be on my board come Sunday for the live. The first one, Leonard Fournette. I think he had 20 carries last week. He was the undisputed number one running back and he gets Miami this week. So I think that's a really good matchup, but I'm waiting to see Giovanni Bernard's injury because last week uh, Fournette got all the, all the targets in the passing game, which was really encouraging, but that was because Bernard didn't play. So the week before that, when they played the Rams, Bernard had 10 targets out of the backfield and nine catches. So if Bernard comes back, 
maybe Fournette's ceiling is capped a little bit, and I don't think he has as good of a game. So I'm still waiting to hear about Bernard's injury. He practiced limited on Wednesday and Thursday, so we'll see if he plays and if Fournette will be one of my picks. I also like, like I talked about the Giants and Cowboys. I like that game. C.D. Lamb has not been performing nine points two weeks ago, three fantasy points last week. Amari Cooper is injured. So I think CeeDee Lamb could have a breakout game here against the Giants. They've been running the ball a lot, the Cowboys have, so that concerns me a little bit. But with Zeke not practicing as much and Amari Cooper not practicing, what happens is these players, these receivers especially, they don't practice during the week and they don't have time to run some scripted plays in practice. So if you don't have time to do that, the other receivers are getting more scripted plays. Maybe it's only one or two or three a game, but that could end up to be a touchdown. So I think with CeeDee Lamb, Gallup is still out. Cooper is limited in practice, and so is Zeke. I think Lamb is the healthiest, you know, best receiver or player on their team on their offense right now. So I think he's getting a lot of plays scripted for him right now in practice this week. So I think Lamb has a has a good game this week. I'm still waiting to hear about Zeke and Cooper's injury, but it could be Lamb on my board. Like I talked before, Alexander Madison against the Lions. If Cook plays then I probably won't pick Madison as one of my weekly picks. But if Cook doesn't play, which he hasn't been practicing or he'd been practicing limited this week, and they actually held him out most of the second half last week. So if Cook doesn't play against the Lions, Madison's going to probably have a great game because the Lions are pretty bad at the run defense. And then, like I said, LaVisca Chenault I mentioned earlier, he it's him and Marvin Jones at wide receiver with DJ Chark out. So against the Titans who struggle, they just let up, you know, that long touchdown to Corey Davis against the Jets and the Jets put up 27 points and won the game. So if you have Marvin Jones and Chenault, I think they're going to have good games depending on the matchup and the injuries for the Titans wide receivers. If it's going to be a high, higher scoring game, I might choose Marvin Jones or Chenault as one of my weekly picks. And then the last couple, Tyler Boyd or Jamar Chase. I talked about the injuries for the Bengals. If Mixon doesn't play, that's an upgrade for Boyd and Chase. And if T. Higgins doesn't play, then I think most likely one of my weekly picks will be either Tyler Boyd or Jamar Chase, depending on the injuries for the Packers secondary. Because if Alexander doesn't play, that could mean and T. Higgins doesn't play, and Joe Mixon doesn't play, that means Bengals are going to have to throw it more, and they're basically only throwing it to Boyd or Chase and Alexander, their top corners out on the outside, on the perimeter. That's great for Jamar Chase this week. So stay tuned for all these injuries. Like you know, you know, fantasy is all about injuries and matchups, and that's the same with my weekly picks. So stay tuned for Sunday, but those are the guys that I'm watching. So if you have any of them, you know, keep track of the injuries and We'll see what happens on Friday and Saturday with the injury reports, but hopefully I'll see you guys Sunday for the live and I could, you guys could see who I end up picking. Yep. And your live is uh, noon Eastern standard time on Sunday. It goes for about 45 minutes. Um, and you talk about weekly picks, must sits, you talk about uh, rankings for each position. So a lot to discuss there on the live. Hopefully you guys can come in and join Let's wrap up this show with your must sit player for week five. Yeah. So I have one, well, usually I have three must sit players and you'll find out the other two on Sunday, but I do have one must sit player. He's actually a really good player. He's the top receiver on a team and his name is Brandon cooks. I don't think you should start him this week. The Texans got shut out 40 to nothing by the bills last week. And now they play the Patriots this week. They are at home. But with Davis Mills at quarterback, he had, I think, statistically the worst quarterback ranking of any Texans player in NFL history for the Texans. But he had four interceptions. I think he had less than 100 yards passing. It's pretty ugly for the Texans right now. And with J.C. Jackson covering Cooks, he's going to be man on Cooks the whole game. And they're going to have a guy over the top and inside of Cooks because Bill Belichick's watching this, this Texans team and they're like, I think there was one game that Cooks had like 12 targets and nobody else even had as many as three targets. So Belichick's watching this game and you know Belichick, he wants to take away your best option and their best option to score points is Cooks. So I think he's going to get shut down. I don't even think he's going to have 10 fantasy points. So try to find a way to put him on your bench and I wouldn't start him unless you really, really had to this week. Tough, tough, tough. It's tough playing Belichick, man. You just gonna yeah. First, you have to go with what Anthony Miller. Uh, Anthony and Anthony Miller just got released by the Texans this week. What? 
their second best receiver they just dropped. I, I don't even know why. I didn't really read into it. But so they're literally going to be throwing to like their running backs or maybe their tight end like Jordan Akins might. Mm. They Literally their only receiver because Nico Collins is still hurt. Yeah. So it's like it's only that, like but... it's only cooks like it's just like obvious they have to go to cooks. <laughs> They're they're goose egging this week again. I, I think they might. If you guys have I have the Patriots defense in all four of my leagues, and I'm about to put up like at, I think they're gonna get 20. at least 15, 20 fantasy points. Yeah, 100 percent Like start the Patriots defense and sit everybody on the Texans. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh man, Texans. It's tough. <laughs> that one win. That's it. That's all I know. They need to rod Taylor back. Mm-hmm. And a lot, a lot. They need Hopkins back. They need, <laughs> they need everybody back. They yeah. need Will Fuller back. <laughs> Deshaun. Deshaun. Oh my God. What are your thoughts on Deshaun Watts? Should we start him this week? Yeah. <laughs> Pick him up. <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, that does it for John's Fantasy Football Show. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. As we said before, John's Fantasy Football Live Show is going to be on TikTok noon Eastern Standard Time. If you want to go register for it, go to our TikTok at Dorm Debate Podcast and you can click a little register for live event in our bio and you'll be able to register and it will give you a reminder at noon whenever he goes live and you'll be able to just go right in, join as soon as you can, ask your question. He'll, he'll be doing a Q&A for the first 10, 15 minutes. So you'll be able to get in first, ask your question. Hopefully he answers it for you. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and we will have this show next week so we will see you guys then all right beautiful beautiful and what i think it was a pretty good time 42 minutes 42 minutes perfect